playable characters or NPCs are forever dealing with players bothering them, so it's no wonder some of them, well, snap. We previously found a whole bunch of these poor video game folk who were just sick of your nonsense and lash out in extremely sassy style. But you lot in the comments suggested even more, showing that you're just as bad as us at bugging the heck out of NPCs. So be warned for some very angry reactions as we look at seven more NPCs who are so done with your bullsh**, but wear spoilers for the following games. Previously, we showed you what happens when you annoy Eevee in Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Ah! I'm so sorry, Eevee. I only did it for the video. But of course, there's the alternate Pokemon who you can give little scritches to or straight up annoy. If you instead picked up Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, you can pet the noggin of Pokemon's most famous electric mouse. Pika, Pika. Yes, cute little Pikachu absolutely loves to be made a fuss of, and it's a good thing too, seeing as Pikachu is so cute! Yes you are! Yes you are! Who would you be? Ellard, task at hand. Oh, yeah, sorry. But be warned, like Eevee, he has his limits should you not pet him quite right, as commenter Shadow Salibi notes. The Pikachu one is even more extreme, since he literally electrocutes you if you annoy him. Oh, that sounds painful. Oh, that looks painful! <sighs> yep, Pikachu doesn't just push you away, he full on zaps you with an electric attack. And after you were zapped out to the menu, Pikachu is just as annoyed as Eevee, haughtily looking back at you over his shoulder. Which, fair enough, but electrocuting? <laughs> All I'm saying is I don't want to be a vet in the Pokemon universe that has to take Pikachu's temperature. <laughs> Sometimes in the comments, people cannot believe when we didn't include something in our videos, such as commenter Fire Hartle, who said, I don't know how you got through this list without mentioning the save Moogle from Final Fantasy IX. I'll tell you why we didn't mention it. We didn't want to accidentally encourage our viewers into making the dangerous mistake of pissing off a Moogle. These cute little floating bat-like creatures are found throughout the Final Fantasy series, often helping you save your games. Such is the case in Final Fantasy IX, where on the world map you can call upon a Moogle to help you save your progress. You can always change your mind about saving once they arrive, and this change of heart is just met with the simple request of Don't call me if you don't need me, Koopo. But, and we can't believe we're telling you how to do this, do it enough times and eventually this Moogle will f***ing snap. Keep calling it over and first the Moogle will start to lose its patience. Aw, oh, they're so cute when they're angry you're thinking. Yeah, well think again! Continue to bug the creature and suddenly it will escalate to outright threats. I'm sharpening my knife. Yeah, that's right. A small bad cat thing with a ball on his head just threatened to stab you. Bet you didn't think that was going to happen in your magical fantasy game. The bravest, or perhaps stupidest, of Final Fantasy IX players can keep bugging this floaty, blade-wielding thing and eventually it will snap, by now being absolutely done with your bullsh**. Wow, they seem real mad now. I think you should stop it. Well, been nice knowing you. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. The Stanley Parable is a game where your movements and decisions are narrated by a disembodied voice. So, of course, most players do everything in their power to grief that voice as much as possible by doing the total opposite of what it says. Eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> 
There are multiple hilarious ways to annoy the narrator in the game, but commenter Jeremy Gilbert pointed out one particularly fine example. I just want to add my favourite bit from the Stanley Parable. I know there's a lot of ways to annoy the narrator in that game, but the best, in my opinion, has to be the closet. Yes, at one point in the game you come across a broom closet, notable perhaps because it's the first non-blank door in the game that has something other than a number on it. So curious players will wander in, at which point the narrator pipes up. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Hmm, kinda sounds like he wants us to leave. Guess what we're gonna do now? Upon a player refusing to leave the broom closet, the narrator goes through some stages. First, concern. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here, I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Then, straight up mockery. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favourite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Eventually, the narrator just assumes you're not at your keyboard anymore, or at least that you are, but not fully. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. Yeah, dead funny, because I'm annoying you. <laughs> the narrator somehow still doesn't get the joke and shouts for someone else to take over at playing. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. You too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Oh, narrator, this is only the beginning. See, the Stanley Parable is a multi-ended looping game, and while you are eventually forced to leave the broom closet to continue the game, you can end up right back here on another loop. Head on inside and... Oh no, oh no 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 no, not again, I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you, I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. Okay, fine, I'll leave, but you just wait until the next time I loop past. Ah, he's boarded it up. Well, that shows me. Guess I'll go play the rest of the game then. Isn't that a hoot? I love it myself. Best part of being a Daedric Prince, really. Go ahead, try it again. He loves it! Ah, summoned again. My lord does so enjoy that, as is his prerogative. I'll assume you're done for now. In Oblivion's Shivering Isles DLC, you get the chance to visit the home of Shergoroth, the Daedric Prince of Madness, who rules these lands with a loud outfit and a questionable accent. You've run a maze like a good little rat, but no cheese for you yet. Oh, well, maybe a little. I'm sorry, what part of Ireland slash Scotland slash New England are you from? Using his weird accent, he gives you a gift, as noted by commenter Colton Schiffer. Haskill from Oblivion's Shivering Isles DLC. Early on, Shagareth gives you the ability to summon him, and then asks you to demonstrate your skill. Do this more than twice, and Haskill gets increasingly annoyed with you. Yes, for completing a couple of life-endangering tasks on the Isle, Sheogoroth's haughty Chamberlain Haskill is at your beck and call. Much to his delight. Ah, our Lord has granted you the power to summon me. How wonderful for me. Oh, you have no idea. Eggsy Shegsy encourages you to try it again, and before going back to wrap up your conversation with the Prince of Madness, you can practice summoning Haskell over and over and over. Yes, you've gotten rather proficient with your new ability. As I said, try not to abuse your power. This, of course, means he gets more and more annoyed. Have we not covered this? I believe you've mastered your new skill. Which, of course, means you just want to keep summoning him. I was right there. You could have just walked over to me. Yes, but where's the fun in that, Haskell? It's hard not to quietly chortle at the screen as this stuffy man slowly gets more and more irritated, but sadly, it all comes to an end when he finally puts his foot down and comes to the end of his reserve of voice lines, the developers clearly not having anticipated your persistence. That's enough. Really. <laughs> Fine, Haskell. You're no fun. Yeah, just wanted to flag up. It's not like I've got hordes of replacement monitors just lying around back here in the old warehouse that I can just wheel out and bolt back on. 
didn't, I didn't order in loads of spare monitors thinking some crazy woman's going to go out and smash them all. Sorry if that's my fault. Sorry if I didn't have the forethought to think, oh, she, she might go crazy one day and just smash all the monitors instead of just getting on with things. Sorry I didn't think of that. Your relationship with Wheatley is somewhat strained throughout Portal 2. First, he's a chatterbox stuck with someone who can't say a single word. Just say yes. Okay, what you're doing there is jumping. Uh, you just you just jumped. But never mind, say apple. Apple. Okay, you know what? That's close enough. Just hold tight. Then, spoilers, you're stuck with Wheatley transformed into a suboptimal, all-powerful AI who also wants to kill you. We were pretty peeved that Wheatley betrayed us, but luckily for us, we can take our petty revenge by annoying him as we solve his puzzles, as noted by commenter Sam Thompson. I will never forget the sheer rewarding joy of figuring out how to smash all of Wheatley's giant wall screens in Portal 2, as he tries everything he can think of to make you give up your vengeful mischief. Throughout his AI reign in Portal 2, Wheatley displays himself on giant screens as he watches you solve his somewhat slapdash puzzles. And for the cheekier players out there, you can solve a bonus puzzle, namely figuring out how to smash every single screen you find, much to Wheatley's annoyance. Yes, all right, okay, this is getting tiresome. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised you haven't got something better to do, to be honest. Um, I know I have, but um, you, what have you done? You've proven that you can break screens. It's proven, well done, factual, well done, good. Aren't you, little Miss Clever, little Miss Smashy Smash? Of course, his annoyed reactions make you want to do it even more, if only to delight in Stephen Merchant's excellent annoyed voice. What is this, like a hobby for you now? I mean, honestly, it's, you know, it's crazy. I mean, I mean, you must have been running around for hours. I'm surprised you've got the energy to smash screens willy-nilly. Honestly, I'd, I'd have a little lie down if I were you. Have a nap. See, Mum, video games are art. Should you manage to get all 11 screens, which is a tricky feat, you're rewarded with a nice little achievement for all your mischievous work. But you're also rewarded with a good talking to from Wheatley, because this time he's not angry, he's just disappointed. They're not even your streets to break. It's vandalism. It's pure vandalism. You wouldn't do that if this was your house, would you? If, you were in, if I came around your house, smashing your telly to bits, you'd be furious, and rightly so. Unbelievable. Oh, God. This is worse than when he just wanted to kill us. Uh, sorry, Wheatley. Oh man, I feel bad now. How much do they cost to replace? How much? Okay, yeah, don't feel that bad. What's all this stuff for? This stuff, Desmond. Oh, this stuff is nothing special, really, this stuff. It's just the stuff that keeps our entire operation from falling apart, really. It requires a great deal of concentration to keep it all moving, so you'll forgive me if I don't have time to play meet and greet. Sean Hastings is what you get if you throw a British person into a deep pool of irritation, perhaps by pouring the milk in before the hot water to make tea. Idiots. Yes, thank you, James. James, too shocked to even countenance this line. Sean has all the patience of a saint, but without the S, as in he ain't got any. At least not when it comes to player character Desmond, who Sean makes very clear he doesn't respect or have time for in the slightest. I also provide tactical support for the other assassins. You know, Desmond, the ones who are out there, actually doing stuff, risking their lives, little things like that. Unfortunately for Sean, Assassin's Creed 2 allows players to keep asking him questions, and he doesn't react well to it, as noted by commenter Coffee Addict. I love bothering Sean in AC2 until he goes into his rant about the meaning of I am busy. That's right, Sean is doing vitally important IT nerd stuff pertaining to saving the world, so bug him one too many times and... What part of I am busy? Don't you understand? Is it the I bit that refers to me? Is it the am bit that's like a doing thing? Is it, is it that I'm busy? I'm busy. Whoa, okay, Sean. Guess we know who put the ass in Assassin's Creed. That's right, you. Sean the ass. You are the ass, my friend. Lucy, what's wrong with this guy? I think he's stalking me. Hello, Desmond. Go away. Desmond, darling? What? Who said that? Why, I did, of course. How? Y you can talk now? I mean, you could argue that I always could, and you just didn't care to listen. Slowly but surely, video games have realised one thing. We want to put the fuzzy widow animals. One such game is In Sound Mind, which not only lets you pet the cute white kitty Tonya, but also gives players a rather meta trophy slash achievement should you actually do it. Good kitty.
Ah, uh, it me. However, while we really want to pet the kitty cat lots and lots, the game is also very aware that, being independent creatures, most cats have a maximum threshold for attention. This was spotted by Kronos Morpheus1234, who said, The cat from In Sound Mind. Okay, so some context needed here is that past a certain point in the game, this cute cat can actually talk to you like a kind of spiritual guide, and whenever you pet her, you can hear exactly what she thinks. Right there, behind the ears. Okay, I think I prefer it when they just purr. Still, if the human voice doesn't make it weird for you, you can continue to pet the cat, but unfortunately for you, this cat can be way more vocal if she gets bored of it, giving you multiple and very unsubtle hints of when you've spent too long fussing over a video game cat. I get it, you like me, you can stop now. Fine, whatever, I've got other things to do in my life other than pet video game cats. List like, several of them. Um, well, I was gonna... Well, just one. Just one will do. M maybe baking? Baking. Yeah? Baking. You do a lot of baking? Sometimes. Sometimes. Her lies laid bare, everyone. Okay, that's enough of that. Better hurry up and outro this video Hang before I start baking, I Ellen. I am gonna, <laughs> gonna do baking. <laughs> the, oven, the oven's all hot and ready for the dough. Yeah, well, you've got to let it rise first. You've got to let it, you got to let it, you put, the, you put it in the special drawer with the cling film over it like they do on Bake Off, yeah? yeah I'm convinced. She knows prove, it you'll prove it. Yeah, prove it. I'll prove you, that I'm good say, at baking. Anyway. <laughs> Well, I don't, it's what you do in baking. See, I know more already. Already, Please, the lessons are working. Videos. Okay, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have a Patreon if you would like to uh, support us uh, petting video game cats all the time. Um, and we have some other videos here that you can go and enjoy. Hey, these are the games that didn't let you pet things. And here's a lovely, which video would you like from outside Xbox? There's so many! We'll pop one there and uh, you can just go on a lovely adventure having an explorer over there, but we'll see you next time. I'm gonna go bake. All right.